Hoopa! And welcome to Tinker Tailor Solder Fry, the Let's Try program here on the mighty Loading Ready Run Video Entertainment Network. My name is Ian Horner, and I am your host tonight, as uh, most nights, um, especially during this ongoing global pandemic. We're still back here in the uh, Tilty House Studios, uh, Crystal Gondola, etc., etc. And uh, today we're going to be putting together. Uh, or at least starting a project that I've been wanting to do for a very, very long time, which is to put together a mechanical keyboard. I've been, it's a project I've had in the back of my head for a while now because I'm a, I'm a big mechanical keyboard fan. Um, I got back into it before the whole scene exploded and now I'm kind of like, now I'm the old man who's lost with all the stuff that's going on and I have no idea where, like, what even is a milky, uh, milky egg, uh, which is apparently what these are, or milky yellow? There's so many switches. There's so much opportunity for interesting and exciting things in the keyboard realm. And I thought, now's, now's the time. Well, one other thing pushed me over, and that's a bit of software that's going to make this, uh, this job a little bit easier and easier in the future when it comes to making uh, keyboards in general. Um... What are we talking about here? I, mean, I, mean, I have a keyboard hipster. Ian Horner probably says Hexy. Uh, it's kind of the opposite, actually. I was I was into keyboards before they were cool, and never kept up, and so now I'm uh, not cool. Still, it works perfectly that way. Um, right. Uh, Square Dog Keep says most of them are just Cherry MX clones with various tolerances. Yep, that's exactly what this is. This is a Gatrion, uh, which is Gatrion. Uh, milky yellow, which as we know is yet yeah, is stated already, uh, is a cherry clone, um, which is fine because cherry makes a fine switch. Um, this one has, I think, 80 grams of no 75 gram or micrograms or grams. I'm not sure which it is of uh, of actuation force. It's uh, it's linear. There is no dedent, so these are kind of kind of. They're pokey. They, 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 they just go down and they work. Uh, they're fine. I got them because they were the ones that I could get uh, quickly enough to uh, <laughs> to do this project. Uh, because it's going to be an interesting one. Um, let's start off here. So I was th thinking, did I want to uh, wire a keyboard by hand and solder all the columns and whatnot? And uh, turns out there's a piece of software that uh, will help you out with putting together your keyboard layout and other parts. And let's get started on, on this here. <laughs> well, Matt Johnson says, Ian's first keyboard was a Casio. Actually, my first mechanical keyboard was an Alps keyboard for the Apple, uh, for the Apple Macintosh, uh, the ADB keyboard, extended keyboard two, which is a fantastic keyboard. Alps switches are some of my favorites. I, I have de, uh, de, de bounced them so that they, they, they have a much nicer, uh, more satisfying click to them. Uh, first, uh, mechanical keyboard that was non, or was, uh, let's say USB or PS2 based, because it was both, was uh, my Cherry Blue uh, financial keyboard. That's the one that's got the main keyboard down here and then up in front, almost like an open laptop screen. Uh, you've got your numpad, your F keys, your arrows, etc. It's it's kind of cool. It's also got a little trackpad on it, which is kind of kind of dumb and fun. Um, Give me, give me a keyboard that is, that's entirely whatever insane switch was under the Rev1 Apple II reset button. Ooh, art. <laughs> Let's find out. Uh, we'll have to save that for another episode, though. So, um, unfortunately, I was going to show you all this on the screen, because that's the best place to put screen things. But for some reason, um, whatever I've done... Uh, has caused my laptop to now be emitting uh, HDCP rays, which means that my capture card is getting all fussy about whether or not it can actually uh, access them. Wait a second, I've got something to deal with that. Just hold on. I'm going to go walking over here for a second. This is why you keep things around, even if they don't always work for everything. Uh, remember those little USB HDMI capture uh, dongles that were going around earlier in the pandemic? I'm, I'm not a fan. The, the quality, I think, in them is not great. But the important thing is they, uh, I think they disrespect HDCP. So, yeah. <laughs> Disrespectful to dirt, like our good friend Mr. Spark. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, good. I think I can fit it in the back here. Like, oh no, I need an 
open an empty USB port to jam this in, and it's, uh, let's move that one. There, good. And then if we chug that into here. Tinker Taylor Solder Fry on, on the fry. All right, let's, uh, look at us. Also, six nibbly unable to push the reset button, so my memory may not be reliable. That is, uh, that is... I mean, I, oh, I remember that button being just a good a chunk click. It's good, good stuff. Okay, uh, where was I going to go here? Right. You can put the laptop over there. If this doesn't work, then we can use the, the top-down camera, and this will be all okay. Uh, but let's go to the game panel. Hey, that's working. Good. Happy with that. Let's add a new source. Video capture device. Uh, USB capture. Oh, not that one. USB video. Ooh, that's it. That's that's the one we want, but we don't want it there. We want it underneath the iOS camera. And uh, we want to turn the... And we also want to plug it in. Because if it, wow, why was I pistachioing there? If you don't plug it in, it doesn't actually work. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Boop. Okay, let's hope and hopes and prayers, everyone. Hopes and prayers. Okay, so the USB capture device appears to be what's deactivate, reactivate. Uh, custom resolution is. 1920 by 1080. Yes, good. Match output FPS. Yes, that's good. Video format. Um, let's say motion JPEG. You know what? I don't think this is going to work. Which makes me kind of sad. But at least it's not. Uh, at least it's not glitching out with regards to. Uh, with regards to the. HDCP. Why are you not? Uh, let's scale this, please. I want 1080p. 720p? Will you do 720p for me? You won't do 720p for me. Well, poopity boop. Uh, it's a good try. Uh, we are no longer there. So let's do the camera down. Um, but for those of you who want to play along at home, this doesn't work out half bad, actually. It's not great, but it's not good. Uh, let's see here. Boop, 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 boop. Does my laptop have opened the background that might help turn may turn on the HDCP? No, absolutely nothing. This was uh this just popped up for no good reason. We're gonna go here and I'm gonna throw that in the chat so y'all can uh work along at home if you like. So what this does is uh this is a little piece of software that will allow you to uh, hot, or not hot, make a hot swap based PCB backing, uh, 3D printed style. And so that's what I've done here. Uh, this is what it's gonna look like at the end, but that's not what it's gonna be right now. I just wanted to show you what some of this stuff is capable of. So we'll have to actually uh, grab this. Boop, boop, boop. And let's go uh, get checkout paste. Not a Git directory. Oh, that's right. Well, you know what? We'll just grab, grab it with a zip. I have not uh, not updated a lot of things on here, so uh, let's hope everything's good in the downloads folder. Hot swap PCB generator. Good. Put it in me. Hot swap. Okay. And I term. Do I have npm installed? Wow. Let's fix that. Uh, grab npm. And now we just wait for, uh, for, uh, for homebrew to figure out its life. Let's see if this takes too long here. Definitely cheated and just ordered a PCB for my build, but I've wanted to do one of these as well. And that's, maybe that's actually how I, that's the first keyboard that I built myself, but I wouldn't consider it to be uh, a from scratch. Oh, come on. I gotta install the Xcode tools? This is absolute. <sighs> yeah, the first keyboard was a Mastrop custom uh, keyboard club 
uh, 60%, I think, because it doesn't have the good arrow keys or the good home enter keys. Uh, but I did end up uh, soldering a bunch of cherry greens to that keyboard. It was fun. So yeah, that was uh, not a fan of the 60%, unfortunately, I've, des I've decided. I, I really like my inverted T and my, uh, and my page up, page down. I actually depend on them a lot you know, for the work I do. So, bleh. Yeah, 65, I think, is the, uh, is the percentage that, uh, that does that. Okay. <clears throat> you know what? Let's, uh... Let's not worry about uh, about bringing that up because everything that's in here is uh, is properly already uh, already installed. So um, you run the script, which is just an NPM script, uh, but you run it against a keyboard layout that you've put together. Now there's a number of they, they give you a few here, the CR. KBD, which is the one I based my, my things off of, as well as the Egg Cat and the JD40. You can also grab uh, uh, Ergodox uh, keyboards, which is 65%. But most importantly, if you're curious, you can use the KLE uh, keyboard, ed uh, keyboard uh, language editor. Uh, and then you can actually go ahead so here's an example of a, a keyboard editor. No, that's not a good one. Keyboard layout editor designs. You can lay out the keyboard in JSON, how you'd like to uh, to have it done. So, I mean, for example, uh, wait, which one am I working off of again? CR. Okay, well, let's, let's bring up a, a default 60% keyboard. This is your default keyboard, 60% keyboard. You can see that there doesn't appear to be an inverted T. Um, Fun thing is, once you've got all your keys laid out the way you let you want a keyboard to exist, you hit the uh, raw data button and you get a textual representation of your keyboard. And then you can actually just go into uh, here and let's uh, open this up with VS Code. Come on, give me my VS Code. There we go, VS Code. And I'm indeed loving it. I'm not loving the auto updates that constantly need to happen. And you can see here, just a nicely formatted JSON telling you where all these keys go and live. Once you get that done, you run the you run the script. And oh no, am I gonna have to uh, run this? I might have to run the script. Don't save. Let me just double check that. What do we got in here? Actually, I'm gonna give pull out here for a second. Uh, da, da, da. Some people are twitching at the JSON. The JSON's a fine file format. <laughs> it's it's at least uh, human readable in, in a way, in its, in its own special way. Okay, let's go over to Osiris. Uh, connect is me, iHorner, and let's uh, go up a level. Let's delete the old one. We're going to go into documents. Really? Ah, oh, Jesus. Okay, one second. I've got to go. I've got to be right back and drag my file from the documents to the home. I'm going to get into a rant about Mac OS X in a second here. I'm very upset with how in the most recent versions, specifically in, I think, Catalina, they've started really locking down everything in terms of what you can access and what can what programs can access things like i need to give for some reason full disk access to uh to to visual studio code which should already have full disk access thank you very much all right uh tinker taylor and hot swap let's add that to my home directory come on back it's fun being able to talk to you uh Okay, uh, and let's uh, open that up. Declaration of tax documents. Good thing you didn't know about that. Uh, okay, hot swap. Boop. Horse. Okay, so once you run the uh, you, you run the script, you get a bunch of open SCAD files for backplate, uh, 
a diode bending template for this whole thing, but the one that we were, we were most interested in was PCB.SCAD. Oh, well, we don't have an SCAD? We, yes, we do. Open SCAD. O open. Open. Did I not? I downloaded that and installed that before the uh, today's show. Come on. Okay, well, you know what? So, uh, what happened was, <laughs> is that you open up uh, OpenSCAD and it, it auto-generates a file for you based on your keyboard layout that you, that you mentioned. Uh, oh yeah, people are wondering about which shell fish. Um, so, where was I going with, with that? Once you get the file, you print it out, which I have done already. Uh, this is the layout for uh, whatever this is going to look like. Something along that lines. And then all we have to do is throw switches, wire, etc. on there. And it's... Mm. Like, these are some very, very uh, well-done well prints. Uh, and what's going to happen is that once we get things in here, we'll just be able to throw in switches. And if we give it a try, and if we like it, hey, that's great. Then we can print, say, maybe a back plate or a to and a top plate and actually finalize the keyboard. If not, I can move some things around. Try it out again. It's... Such a great tool for prototyping, prototyping, prototyping uh, keyboards. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, why did I close my laptop up? Right, I did that because it was uh, it was dramatic and fun. So let's just bring up the uh, the instructions and uh, continue on. So we've decided on the keyboard layout we want. We've decided on the on the switches. We purchased a big bag of diodes and we've printed, in addition to our keyboard uh, plate, a diode bending uh, jig. So, I mean, let's, uh, let's count out some diodes and get to bending. Actually, no, bending is going to come later. First, we want to do the wire. Seasons one through four. I think season one through four were good. Okay, where were we at here? So first step, you make the you make the the PCB as it is. Uh, then we're going to uh, option two is optional. You can make the plate in the back plane, and then we're going to measure and cut wires for the rows and columns and press them into the corresponding channels in the PCB. So let's get out our, uh, our wire. Fun fact, uh, let's use some colors we haven't used yet. A lot of green and I want to say yellow for this. Uh, fun fact, this is put together for 22 uh, EWG gauge. Uh, Settings are available in the OpenSCAD to change that uh, to different wire if you have a uh, specific wire that you want to use, but I'm just, I, I can go with the defaults. Uh, same thing with the, uh, the diode. You can adjust sizes there in case you want to use different things. The uh, system is also set up currently for chalk uh, key switches in addition to the... Uh, the Gatrion and Cherry, uh, we'll probably get something in the future uh, in terms of updates to Cherry uh, low profile and whatnot. They've, they've suggested they're amenable to those options. Uh, right, wire first. So we probably want a good amount of uh, wire. Let's, let's start with our, uh, with our columns here. So I'm going to say we're going to, we're going to want about this much 
enough to go down the down the column itself and then I'm going to say another four inches actually you know what let's yeah let's go five inches because we can always we can always trim back so one two three four five looks good there and then we'll just give that a snip waiting for a fully analog keyboard to arrive how Dress, what does that mean fully analog keyboard i'm very curious uh someone asked what's on tap tonight uh Linux. uh tonight's tap is category 12's sanctioned saison which is uh an absolutely delicious little beer this is too short all right let's just you know what should we just completely remove this we should remove the the spool yes god these spools are terrible but the wire is so good every key has an 8-bit hall of holy moly drills that is a uh yes yes please that's what you mean by a, a analog keyboard okay yes i'm i'm in i'm in Gib 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 hall effects, please. Honestly, I haven't been excited as excited for the hall effect since God, since the 80s when Arsenio did the whoop whoop thing. That he really should have called that the hall effect, TBH. Okay. So here we go. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Let's trim that up there. Oop. That's one column. We're going to throw that out to the dogs. Next column is that. Plus one, two, three, four, five inches of play. Good. What would you do with an analog keyboard font size? Change depends on how hard you press. I mean, you could go to size. You could go with uh, font weight, which is the uh, I would consider that to be the the strongest move. Okay, three, and then we need three more of a similar length. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Try to look up at things and see the Ard and Lady Aliros talking about radio needing to unlock code. That's that's fun. <laughs> oh god, bold choice, John Log. That's that that's that's a pun foul. <laughs> okay. Go, two, three, four, five, and that is enough for this side. Uh, let's get out the yellow. Oh, yes. Car radio hacking. That's my favorite thing. I mean, it's not really hacking if you're just looking up a... <laughs> a is it? I, I, I'd call it hacking if you're looking, just looking up codes on the internet. It's in the spirit. Okay. Let's have a look at this. This is going to look very pretty once we're done with it. Let's get three more and then two more inches there for a five incher. And then let's just lightly wire it up. Three, four, five. 
go. Or am I making the next gamer keyboard? I mean, <laughs> there's prop. I mean, I've I understand that the uh, the milky yellow is pretty good for gamering, but I think that we're probably going to want a bit more uh, oomph PBH in terms of just weight to keep this keyboard from sliding around everywhere. Okay, now is are we looking at one more row here technically, or is that bottom that bottom row is technically part of the row? I think. Hmm. Oh wait, I can I can look up the rows uh, in the JSON because that matter that's part of what matters because you use that same JSON to generate the code necessary for running on your Arduino Pro Micro to make the whole thing actually go. Okay, where are we at here? Example layouts. VS Code. Give me that. Give me that good, good stuff. Hmm. I feel like I'm hearing background music somewhere that's not here. That's weird. Okay, space and arrays. I think these are all on their own row. So that's... I mean, if not, we can always adjust, right? Let's let's give it our let's give it its own row. So give that. So that seems something. Thumb buttons. For... Wooting. 2HE with all its Hall of Effect key presses. Looking at how to get this keyboard manufactured. Ugh. Gonna look that up there. Oh, yeah! One of those. One of those large friends. Oh, come on! Put the alt keys in! You need, you, you need your alt. Okay. Oh, did that do? No, no, no. There we go. That seems like enough. Okay, there we go. That's one side all done up. Good. Good. I'm happy with that. Uh, next, we need to start bending our uh, diodes and adding them through. Uh, so we're going to need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 on each side. So let's, uh, ye. Let's get into this baggie. Do not lose all the diodes, please. Okay. Let's start with that many and see if that's enough. Oh, no, one more came out of the baggie. Okay, so we got one, two, two, three, five, six, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen total. A few more there, sixteen. Oh. Seventeen. 18, ah, 19, 20, 21. Good. Okay. Oh, wow. That's, that's bad for HP to do. Uh, will we get a tease of the caps tonight, Annex Mita? Oh, my apologies. Uh... <laughs> I don't actually have any caps for this particular project. Um, 
last caps I made was were a set for you know what? Let me just grab them because this is relevant. Uh, did a custom set from keyboard.com. And that uh, was a Christmas gift for myself and Corey a few years back. Where did the keyboard actually go? It didn't die, did it? Oh, there it is. It's hiding in the racks. There we go. <clears throat> so yeah, what we'll probably end up seeing here is uh, boop, these as the keycaps. Uh, I don't know if it's a... Uh, if it's a, a particular style, but I, I, God, I can't even remember what the font is, but I actually ended up going in and, and editing every one of the keys, manually placing the lettering, and, ooh, I still do love the sound of a good cherry green. Hard and clicky. But, that's that. <laughs> All right, let us continue on with our wiring. So I guess we might as well just keep pushing the wires into this to make sure that it's all in place and then we can work on the getting the other side done too. This is, these went in pretty easily. There's a lot to this that's friction fit, keep in mind, which is fine because this is a, uh, this is a rapid prototyping uh, system. Love to make some molds for keycaps, but I would want to get glossy keys without any letters and numbers on them, so I'll need to track that down. They do exist. Uh, couldn't pick a username, so uh, good luck. Alternatively, you can always just rotate them in a uh, polishing drum, too, or something like that. These ones, I think, could use a little bit more friction in them, but they'll be fine. All right, let's flip that over and let's get our columns in order. Uh, we're gonna go bottom to top because who wants wires in their bottom? That is something I should have thought more about before I actually said it, but you know, here we are. Here we are. Okay, that's yeek. Pretty loose in the bottom, loosey goosey in the bottom there. If I rotate the wire, does that stick it a little bit better? A little bit, not not much, not completely. But it's still super cool. Okay, let's uh, wire the second there. <laughs> the rare. Ian innuendo take back. Yeah, no, I was, I wasn't thinking. <laughs> wasn't thinking when I took it back, not when I said it. That, that was absolutely not thinking when I said it. Yeah, honestly, I think, aside from just being a really good prototype, uh, whoops, we didn't do enough greens. So we're looking at five inches plus another inch, six inches total. Great. Wait, that's that doesn't seem right. Eight inches total. That's more correct. Thank you, me. Ooh, although, actually, we should absolutely get this on the same column. So let's go with eight plus... Oh, no, we're going to... Oh, no. Right. Probably want this to... Uh... these to all be on the same columns as well. So we're going to need uh, three more, but thankfully this one we can use on this side here. That's good. Good. Ooh, that's tight. That one's real tight. I'm just going to shave a bit of uh, plastic off the inside there first. Deep, don't too much. This is a very sharp alpha. I was honestly really pleased with how well the uh, the print got dialed in too. So happy overall.
Okay, get in there. Whoops. Retract the blade. Just shove the the wire into the hole. There we go. Two, three, and I think that's all wire now. That's just probably a little bit of insulation. All right, uh, three more. So we want eight plus one. That's going to be nine inches this time. Clip that there. It's one. You can't see me measuring, but I'm measuring against. There's a little ruler at the bottom of this mat. If you ever used a self-healing mat before, you may be familiar with the concept. Put that with those. And then finally, one more nine-incher. A respectable length. All right. Keep those for a later. Wait. Is one of these the right length? Be nine inches. No, one of them is remains at the eight length, which is uh, too short. Too short for the prom. One more. I don't know why I said too short for the prom. Like that's something you get checked for height at the uh, at the door. Well, I'm sorry, but you must be this tall to dance the night away. Okay. There's one column. Then we've got two, 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 two columns. Then we have, I think you know where this is going. Th -th 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 three. Check it. Three columns. Okay. That's kind of pretty and not bad. We could probably do some more work to make it more permanent if we wanted to with glue, but who, who, who wants to glue right now? Let's flip it over and see how it uh, seems. Oh, that's actually not bad. Probably want to, yeah, because I think this is one of those keys where you have a extra on this side and an extra on that side, and then the thumbs down here. That's probably too far back for that. We probably want this closer out here and similar with these. But yeah, that's going to be good. I like it. Okay, uh, moving right along. We need to take a sip of that beer, and as I mentioned earlier, bend some diodes. Here is a diode I bent earlier. Notice how it fits nicely into the uh, into the receptacle. Notice also that uh, it is backwards, uh, the little black dot uh, indicating either the cathode or the anode. Yes, I know it's important which. No, I don't remember which is which. But... Uh, yeah, it needs to be the other way around. So let's let's use this one and fix it such that no one will ever be able to tell. If you don't have your own bent diode, store bought is fine. <laughs> yeah, we can't all grow our own uh, organic diodes. Okay, so yeah, it goes this way. So we get the little diode in the hole there, and then bend it down. Take the other wire and bend it through down through that section. Then you get a perfectly bent diode for your uh, for your use. Okay. 
Uh, and if I recall, we actually now is when we might need to actually start making some holes. Okay. Ba -ba 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 -ba. You can actually change the diode direction too if you prefer. Okay, start by bending the anode leg next to the body. We've done that, and then go the other side. Cathode leg needs to be pushed through the column wire, but it isn't sharp or stiff enough to be to cut its own hole reliably, even in silicone sleeved wire. So I recommend using a sewing needle or pre-piercing a hole. Well, guess what I have handy here? Yes, a tiny, tiny sewing needle. So I guess, oh, actually, you can see that too. Let me zoom in if I can. Boop. You can see here uh, the holes line up with the column there. And then you've got the other side here, which uh, is the other side of the diode. Uh, and that lines up with, I believe, the second uh, one of the other pins on the back here of the keyboard and then this pin which has the spade on it the sharp end is just going to go ka -chunk right into the uh right into the column wire so let's pierce ourselves a uh, a section pierce through here what ow i should probably get a uh one of those things. Thimble! That's what you call. One of those Monopoly pieces. Okay, and then let's see if that'll pierce through the wire reliably. Because this is going to be the most difficult part. Oh, okay, I don't think I got through all the way on the, uh, the needle. So let's get it through. Ow! I pierced my finger. But that's okay. And does that do enough to get the diode in? Oh no. Am I going to need a bigger pin? I think I might, because this is just ruining these diodes. Uh, all right. Now let's try again. Let's make sure that's good. Let's pass the pin all the way through. Got any sail maker's needles? I'm not sure what 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 about a sails maker needle makes uh, it, it makes that useful. With the columns, you may want to go the other way. I if you mean from the bottom up, that's not going to work with these things, unfortunately. Uh, let fire rain down. Oh, wait a second! No, damn it! Damn it! Damn it, damn it, damn it. Maybe go up into the, uh, the hole. Sew it that way. Just saying there is space. Well, there's not really any space in the bottom there. They're kind of built to go on, to have the, uh, the diodes go on top. Unless you mean Pierce, piercing the uh, the wire from the bottom, in which case that's difficult to line up to TBH. Oof. Clip the diode angle while they get an angle. That's not a bad idea. One of those moments when you wish for an FDM printer and just a wee bit more tight tolerances. It's, it's really... This is good for uh, what I'm used to. But yeah, let's get an angle clip there. Okay. Not sure if that's good or not, but we'll find out in a second. So this is kind of really going to make or break this project. Okay. Ah. Uh. It goes through, but it does not want to pierce the silicone very well. 
There we go. Got that one kind of through. Oh god, that's an ugly, ugly, ugly bend though. Let's get that up in there. And then kind of thread it through. Nope, that's good god, we have really ruined this particular diode. Thankfully I have a lot of them, so that's not so much of an issue. Do you have a syringe with a needle enough large enough to feed the diode wire through? I think my big problem here is that I went with the wrong size needles. This is, uh, I went with the smallest one I could find, and that may just be too small. Uh, so, let's just see about sliding that in. Ow! Definitely made it all the way through the wire. Mmm, mmm, that, that pleasant feeling when you can feel, you can absolutely feel a, uh, a piece of metal going directly down into your flesh. That's, uh, it's a, a, a no bueno for me. Thank you very much. All right, let's get this one through. And get, oops, that's, those are nippers, not a pliers. Okay, clearly I'm going to need a couple more tools here than what I've currently got uh, sitting around with me. But, man, the projects you think are going to be easy just turn out the opposite, don't they? Okay, so this one wasn't the cleanest diode, but it did get through there. Okay, uh, put the cathode on the right. Yep, that's what we want. Okay. And then bend it to the right to lock the diode whipper. And then the bend. Okay, so we bend this one to the right to lock it, and then we bend this one up to lock as well. Good, 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 good. Um, let's try, you know what, no, we're not gonna try. Don't try anything. I mean, <laughs> wow, that, that, that took me directly to the opposite of where this show usually goes. Folks, we're going to do a short break here, because uh, it seems to be about that good time, so uh, get up, stretch your legs, Swap your fluids as need be. I'm going to get a bigger needle, too, and maybe see if I can get some emergency tetanus. And uh, we'll be back with more Tinker Taylor Solder Fry in just a few minutes. Do not go away. And... Folks, we are back with more Tinker Taylor Solder Fry here in the Mighty Loading Ready Run Video Entertainment Network. My name's Ian Horner. We are in the midst of wiring up a prototype uh, keyboard layout wiring thing, and it's it's going. But uh, before we wanted to get uh, too far into this, I wanted to thank those of you who have been so kind as to drop your subs on us uh, this evening. I want to thank Kazman 20 a who's been subscribed for 59 months. Let Fire Rain Down is a 33-month subscriber. Uh, Melbourne Robert is a 18-month subscriber. Thank you for your support. Baron Radium has subscribed for 47 months. Thank you. Fatal Shell, 25 months for gamer. Y y y yes, we are all we, we, we are all gamers right now in this room. Thank you. Daily Maple Syrup, 15 months. Thank you for your continued support. It's your boy Richards coming in with 94 months of subscription. Thank you for that continued and enormous support. Unnatural D20, subscribing for 22 months and then getting the DM to uh, ask for a uh, re-roll, please. Reagan, 86, 43 months. Thank you for your continued support. And Corflux, jumping on the bandwagon with 100 bits. Thank you as well. Let us continue to bend diodes. I have brought with me tools, needle nose, uh, smooth bore pliers for that, uh, 
that's stopping power. Uh, we got the nipper still, Ulf is still around. Uh, but we need a new needle. And so I brought out the ancient, uh, my grandmother's old pin cushion. And let's try to decide which of these has the girth that we want to apply to a... Uh, like this, I think, is probably a bit too thick. Uh, and this is definitely too much. <laughs> but uh, this is probably too much as well. I'm thinking somewhere around... Let's try pink this time. Yeah, tomato, tomato pin cushions are the best. Keep them alive forever. Okay, we need to bend the diode again. Let us bend the one leg outside of the template. Yes, thank you. And then we will insert it into the template. And bend the wire down. Secondarily, wire goes down. Perfect bend. Template complete. Let us now pierce the wire with the pin, creating a small hole inside, into which we will place the anode of, yes, good, no, bad. Uh, let's see if we if trimming that end to a point will help again. Because it seems to last time. Ooh, it's an, it, it looks aggressive when I look at that point, so. I guess that's the point. A... Would a pin vise be more appropriate for this? Uh, probably. Okay. Do I own a pin vise? Uh, let's see. You know what a pin vice looks like? Probably not. Yeah, that might be useful. Uh, don't own one though, so not going to use that. Uh, but that's okay, because we got it through the wire. Let's do a quick continuity test on some of these, shall we? Because I think... It's worth checking out. We'll, we'll, we'll re-establish that as a connection. Uh, let's get the handy-dandy multimeter. Now with Probe Master probes. Okay, and let's get that in the end there. Just gonna shove it in. Sound I love to hear. Yeah, highly recommend if, if you got a multimeter of any kind, um I highly recommend the Probe Master probes. Marco Rep uh, turned me on to them. And um the way I like to describe it is: hey, if you don't have the money to buy a fluke, at least you can make it feel like you're using a fluke. So uh, good god, are these good probes? Alrighty, more bending. Uh, Corey's father has a fluke as well, but he also works in the industry. So, by the industry, I mean like in the uh, in the power generation industry. Uh, OPSEC probably shouldn't say too much about that, but I mean, not not that he needs not to be to consider OPSEC. But it's just nice to. Not talk about people unless they want to be talked about. Anyway, uh, where was I going with that? All the way to Chicago, that's where. If it's not from the fluke region of France, it's a sparkling coincidence, God damn it! <laughs> sparkling multimeters. Ow! Don't 
do that too many times. You know what? I might actually go get that thimble. Because this might happen a non-zero amount of times. Okay, let's get that down into the hole. There we go. Bend to the left to lock into place. Bend up to lock into place as well. And there we go. Idroch, no, this is not a kit. This is a uh, this is a 3D printed base. Uh, let me hit you up with some links here. My Horner, that's me, posted a link in the chat uh, that'll give you the the code. You need to run your own version of one of these. I'm just going to leave those down there for now. Not until we get the rest of these in place, because it's going to be a while. Not too long, though. This is going pretty quick, I think. Okay. Wait, you have the Fluke Networking Kit? PM Kit? That's an, that's an odd one. Wow. Lord Zerk, if you've got a uh, if you've got an AC battery, um, boy, you 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 may have. I, you, I mean, now you have two problems. I mean, three if it's a three cycled, but if you've got a three cycle battery, you now have three problems as well. Boop. Making sharp. Points. Wow, I didn't even actually use the... I haven't used the needle yet. Oh my god. This is, a. Uh, this is smart. Let's, let's try the needle on this one. Let's thread the needle. Eh. Making holes in... Things. Here's the skeletal way. Ow. This time it didn't pierce the flesh. It just grazed off. This isn't good. This isn't good. This has got to be like a void comp test for people who don't learn. You keep poking yourself in the in the finger. Why do you keep poking yourself in the finger? There's a turtle on its back, and you keep poking yourself on the finger. Tell me about your mother while you poke yourself in the finger. Another one. Whoop. Okay, let's not trim the end, but let's give this one a uh, a hole. Oop, I should make sure to uh, bend up and left and right, rather. All the cross stitch people are like, you is new. Wow. Wow. Yeah, no, that's. Uh, that's fair. But usually we have tools for this rather than whatever this is that I'm doing. Like, frankly, if, if, if this was just... I mean, it's not just a, 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 a opportunity to avoid soldering, clearly, because soldering would make this job actually a lot easier. Okay, I'm gonna check this one as well because I don't know how I feel about that connection I just made. Get in the hole, probe master. Aha! This probe master did not does not make continuity. I shall do it again. Hmm. The thimble is supposed to be used on the pushing side. Well, I mean, we, we can we can do both, right? I'm not going to let big thimble tell me how to use it. If we only used products for their intended or their designed uh, 
usage, then we would never be using, uh, <laughs> we would never be finishing our models with, uh, with floor wax polish. Okay. I think what I want to do is just, yeah, have my fingers on opposite sides of that wire. Oh God. Is it going in? It's going in. Is it going in right? Yeah. Uh, that's not a good, that's, mm. Okay, let's see if I can do this this way. Let's so go right into the middle of the cable and push directly down. Okay, that feels like it entered the cable. Now, oh, yep. Yeah. Flip it over, hold it down, and push the wire through, push the wire through, Arrgh! push the wire through. God, there's going to be so many holes in this particular wire. But this feels to me like this might be a good, oh God, uh, let's use the pliers to yank that through. There we go. Get in. <laughs> Uh, it's the push piece. There we go. Push down, push down. Let's try again with the continuity. Ow. Don't poke yourself with your own master probes. Good. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. Yeah, we won't lose any electrons, so uh, over that. Uh, up and left. We're probably gonna need, we're probably gonna need to trim some of these wires too, so that we don't get bridges between the diodes. <laughs> okay. Let's continue on here. So right, and the non anode side. Put in the jig. Pull it down. Pull it down, and then the jig is up, as the kids say. What kids? I don't know. That's that's not my problem. What kids be saying today is not my problem. Okay, that's a tiny hole. Let's hope that the hole stays relatively open. As... Okay, failed to go in. Failed to go through. Pushing it all the way. Oh, that's a good... That's a good one right there. You'll love to see it. You love to see it. <laughs> I think once I actually get this done, I might just coat this entire back end in, t in tape and or uh, hot glue. Uh, there we go. Push down good and hard on that to make sure everything's still in place. Uh, except for that one. And then that's got to be bent up. Not out. Cool. We've got diodes in three of our connection points. More diodes. So if this works out, I mean, I, I am spending a lot of time on this. More time than I expected I would be. Uh, and... But if this works out, I might end up giving a try <clears throat> to the Ergo Docks layout. So I understand that can be pretty, uh, it's a pretty divisive layout, but 
I do like my ergonomics. Oh, that that one just went in like butter. No problems there whatsoever. Uh, and yeah, another diode. I have so many diodes, I might even be able to uh, use these for another pro or add some diodes to my to some of my previous uh, keyboard and or controller uh, projects. In retrospect, where's my needle? Pink needle goes through the hole that is exposing the wire. Goes all the way through. Release that. It's prison. Poke the wire gently. You've been poked by. You've been stroked by a gentle criminal. Don't at me, but gentle criminal might be the best character name. Just best character name. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Uh, gentle. Boop. Big hole. We'll just leave that there. Bend arm. Bring back. So the other thing about this that I hadn't thought of until just now is that we could make some very interesting macro keyboards with this. Just completely uh, custom design and uh, well, just layout and and so, a number of keys. It doesn't. It doesn't even have to be uh, what's the word alphanumeric. Although, uh, what's his name? Enzo might have something to say about that. Not Ferrari, uh, Matrix. Jesus, I'm just coming out with the... Throwing all the references out tonight. Alphanumeric. It's like, yes, kid. I am familiar with plain text. Aha! This diode didn't go through the hole. All the way. Therefore, must be reinserted. Good poke there. Okay, let's again take advantage of the pre poke, I think. That feels more like it's going to go through, but let's again, whoop. Oh yeah, no, that's, <laughs> come on. Let's take that out, twist it a bit. Get it twisted. And try again. Keep the fingy out of the way. There we go. Okay, now that I've actually got the got a feel for uh, how this god damn it silicone plays, um, it's getting a little easier to insert these. This one is causing me some serious issues, though. Oh, you mother busser! Yep, you just don't want to go through that wire at all, do you? Well, let me tell you something, my friend. You don't have a choice in this matter. You must, you must, you must increase the bust. God, where was that from? Was that the Flintstones? Okay, that looks like a good pierce. Which means that it is definitely not the Pierce from Community. Hey -o. All right. 
in we go. Testing. That is glorious. That's all we want. Mm. Oh, it was from uh, Judy Bloom, really? Sorry, now I just need to actually read through the uh, the chat here a bit. I've been playing, paying too much attention to, uh, to what I'm actually doing. As programmer, I want a 16 key, says Draconite Streams. You can do that! It's, you, you can do... There's all... Uh, the world is your oyster when it comes to keyboard fun. Lords of Acid sampled the Flintstones. I mean, every day another band is born that hasn't sampled the Flintstones. Where'd you go? Let's continue with our work. Not, okay, wondering if so, just got here and not fully sure what the kit is yet. So this is not really a kit, uh, Dragonite. This is a uh, customizable script that will take a keyboard layout editor uh, JSON file, a KLE file, and turn it into a quote-unquote PC, a, print, a, a printed circuit board, which is just this, that you then add your wires and your diodes to. And, uh, like, the layout is done automatically for you, which is great. You can use, you can use the visual keyboard uh, layout editors as well if you want to see what it's going to look like beforehand, or if you trust yourself in uh, your, your open SCAD knowledge or your uh, layout knowledge, you can do that. But the point is that it's a method of, it's a piece of software very useful for prototyping uh, keyboards, like specifically doing exactly what you're wanting to do, which is make something that's never been made before. Uh, the nice thing about it is that you can, it, it doesn't just include the, the PCB sorry, uh, setup, so you could actually, you could get this printed uh, and then go ahead and print off a, a, a back plate, standoffs, a, uh, a, a top plate as well to cover over the keycaps and hold everything a bit more sturdily. But I thought this is just such an interesting... Uh... An interesting system. I couldn't help but try my hand at uh, putting together a a keyboard matrix this way. I especially like the idea that uh, you could then use this if you wanted to, say, test different switches. Like, say you wanted a 60% uh, or 65% keyboard, but you weren't sure if you wanted reds or, or yellows. Well, you could try both. Just replace them. Oh god, the Optimus Maximus, aka the the Big Daddy Stream Deck. Because that was it, right? It, it just, it, it's, it's a big deal was that it had OLED displays in each of the keys. Which to me, like, is always a bit weird. Like, I understand why people like the Stream Deck. It's kind of cool to have a, a macro pad, but you can have a macro pad without having displays in the keyboard. I don't understand it for uh, for, for actual keyboards, because here's the thing, folks. Um, you're not supposed to look at the keyboard. The keyboard is something that you're supposed to, uh, to touch type on. Now that said, you, you can look at the keyboard. I'm not going to say that that's wrong. You can hunt and peck. You can use whatever form of uh, typing assistance and style that you want. But I have always lived by the code that you don't look at the keyboard when you're typing. Ah, 
this one's gonna be a tough one because it's so close to the edge. Might just have to keep my finger on top of this and hope and pray I don't uh, jam my. Hey, how about we use this? Great. That's like a that's like a thimble, an incorrectly used thimble. I'm, I, I've become so used to touch typing that I get upset when, I, when I'm on keyboards that either don't have the, uh, the indents on the proper keys or have them on the wrong keys, which is the absolute worst. Okay, we're going to need to needle this if I hadn't already. And also maybe I want to say, uh, you know what, let's... Good God, what have I done to this terrible, this poor diode? You didn't deserve any of this, friend. All you wanted to do was make sure that electricity flowed only in one direction. And look, look what they did to you. The monsters. <laughs> Ring 86. Are the right keys for you how the Macintosh did it or how IBM did it? Uh, I have unfortunately become used to uh, the IBM system. I vastly preferred the Macintosh, but like it was nicer to have the dot under your middle finger. But I got so used to the other direction that it now drives me... Well, to be honest, uh, it drove me so out of my mind that I had to, on my Mac keyboard at least, on that, that, that Apple desktop bus keyboard that I mentioned at the top of the show, I had to swap the keys. I had to just yank them off and make myself... Oh, hell... and make myself swap the D and F and J and K. So if you're ever using one of my keyboards, or if you're <laughs> a long time Desert Bus uh, engineering team member, you might have had to deal with my really uh, messed up keyboard. Lady Alice, no, not the, not the GS keyboard. This was the, uh, the Apple II, uh, not Apple II, Apple Desktop Bus 2. Sorry, I should have been more uh, clear about that. Get in. Oh, come on! Just go through the hole! You can see it. It's It wants to go through. But it wants to bend. And I don't want to poke another... God, okay, thank God, it's through. It's through. We got there. I don't have to jam another diode directly into my flesh. I mean, the best projects do take a certain amount of blood from you, but... Generally also sweat and tears, but... Two things, I don't... I try not to... I try not to! I, I used to say I don't, but I try not to run on camera. So I try to avoid the sweat, and I definitely don't, uh, definitely don't try to cry on camera all that often. Although, wow, that's, there's a, a sadness has just occurred. I'm sorry! The keg has just died, so if we can please get a moment of silence for the Category 12 Sanctioned Saison. Cheers to you. Don't worry. Don't tell the keg, but we'll get a new one tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> yes. Not sure if y'all can tell, but Corey has come home.
All right. Uh, hey, we're almost on the uh, the second to last column here for this side. Um, we might want to start getting into adding some switches then, and maybe we can do half a keyboard as a... Uh... We'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see how things go. Ah, yes, John Along and VM Kid, I agree that standards exist for a reason. Unfortunately, there was a time when standards were still being decided upon. <laughs> and that might have been the case there. Especially seeing as I think I would can I can probably see Steve Jobs at the time, especially. Uh, paraphrase, paraphrasing, what is it, John, was it John Waters who said I wouldn't, no, it absolutely wasn't John Waters who said that, uh, was it Dally who said I wouldn't want any standard, standards body who would have me as a member? Again, as a, a paraphrase. TBH, I can also see John Waters saying that he wouldn't want to be a part of any standards body that would have him as a member. I can also see him saying that he just wouldn't want to be any part of any standards body. I'm sorry, more talking about Apple's continued use of keyboards that don't have Control-Alt and Meta? I have a Control-Alt and Big Key. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I think what we need to do, what we need to do is really uh, chastise Windows or, or Microsoft for putting the Windows key in the absolute worst space, and then not doing anything with it or not doing much with it. All right. Ha, Lord Zerk, that that's uh. I'm going to call that zinger of the show. I can see I, I, I can see John Waters saying he'd be a part of any body that would have him for a little while, at least. <laughs> yeah, yeah, backspace and delete are weird ones. Just thinking about that. One of my biggest beefs with Windows these days, because I, I use Windows a lot more than I used to. And uh, it's got its uses, mainly gaming. But um, one of my biggest beefs with it, with it is that it doesn't support standard Unix uh, text operator commands, like Control e to go to end of line, or Control a to go to... Uh, beginning of line, control K to cut off everything from uh, cursor to end of line. Discord and Token says, for my TTSF at home project, I've successfully swapped out the case of an old Game Boy Advance SP. Nice! That was one. Anything with a folding hinge is, uh, woof, but good job. Main hiccups were accidentally installing the speaker upside down. It happens. Finding out, oh, the battery cover moves a bit. Annoying. Yeah, but congratulations on that. That's That's a tough one. Well, see, the command is meta key is uh, actually, and this is why I, I appreciate what the Mac has done, especially on Mac OS X, is that oh, by using the uh, the meta slash command key as the command operator for most graphical interface shortcuts, it means that we can still use the control key for Unix based commands, and that means so much flexibility. I also really prefer using my thumb as a modifier uh, key rather than my pinky, but that's neither here nor there. But yeah, not including a delete key is, period, is just, that's just wrong. Because every key is important. Every key has a function. Especially function. 
One might say it has the most important function of them all. And then one might not say anything for a few minutes. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, I think the best thing to do is is to uh, is to do what the Mac did uh, in their keyboard preference pane, which is say, "Hey, do 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 you not like the order of your uh, y y your modifier keys to control Alt Meta? Just do whatever, whatever you want." Rearrange them to thy liking. Boop, boop. That said, there's a lot that I'm upset with Apple right now. Do not, uh, do, do not consider me any sort of an Apple booster at the moment. Because, oh boy. On notice. <laughs> yes, F13 through F15. That's one of the reasons I love my Apple Extended bus 2 because it's got all the good keys Ugh. oh no dang it didn't quite make it through all the way come on you can do it pierce the no pierce the no My drill will be the drill to pierce that no. Okay, let's do a pin prick for this one. Windows had a, a tool to remap keys, but it's not officially distributed anymore. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, hopefully right to repair, uh, I mean, we'll see what, it act, what, what actually happens out of that, but it's a good start. It's a good start. Hey there, what? No. I've now managed to go to the side, ah, to the side of this wire three times. Oh my god, just let me poke you. It does not want to get a hole in it. Good god, good god. Okay. Underappreciated scroll lock. <laughs> Good old scroll lock. Nobody uses that. <laughs> okay, try again. Put it in the jig. Get these pins straightened up. One more time. Hmm. It says some, some, one of the founders of one of the worst offenders goes on a crusade to support right to repair. <laughs> ah, jeez. I mean, I, I, I don't think you can really consider uh, Steve Wozniak to be uh, in line or in lockstep with the, the Apple as it is right now in any way. Yes. There we go. That's a, a spectacular piercing
Wasn't Wozniak always the descendant of John Log? Y yes, that's that is correct. He was the uh, he was the original technical genius, and then they managed to find a lot of technical geniuses, and then uh, and then people thought that Ive was important for some reason. He he did do quite a bit good. Quite a bit of good in terms of design, but I should I I should have never been put in charge of uh, in charge of software. Like that's the part where Apple is falling down the hardest right now, and it's it's the saddest thing because it used to be what they were some of the best at. Like, the whole thing with mobile Safari right now, uh, in the betas, just breaking websites is kind of hilarious, given that mobile Safari basically effectively uh, required the world to rethink how they built websites. Because up to that point, it was like, well, we can do JRE2 for mobile stuff on these really terrible feature phones, or, uh, oh, wait, first... Class web browser. Of course, back during that time, my my opinion was that do not try to make a special web uh, or a mobile version of your website. The whole point of the iPhone was to be able to display the web as she is display as she is written to begin with. But you know what? You can lead an industry to water, but. Etc. Etc. Okay, let's test out some. Uh, I mean, mm, Reagan, Apple loves some standards, but oh, it's a brilliant but Waz can only work on stuff he wants to work on, and then he will. Work. Yep. Yeah. Huh. Oh god, Sax Python looking at UI tunes. Yeah, yeah. Um anytime you're dealing with web objects in 2021, you're uh you've got some God is Is iTunes still web objects in Cold Fusion based? It's ridiculous. Okay, we've got everything in here. Uh let's do a quick test here. Of Oh, and Lady Ailers, I completely... That, this is one of the reasons I respect uh, Waz for that. Is, I honestly think that... Yeah, North American... Damn it. I still need to redo that bottom one. Uh, North American... Society has this weird... Obsession with management as a... Uh, as a goal... Or is something that should even be, uh, not just that it's the end goal, but it's 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 uh, desirable to do. And then you and, and because of that, you get so many people who are good engineers who feel like they need to move into these into this area which they are not equipped nor do they have any desire to be in, just in order to. Make more money to buy that bigger house. And honestly, I, I, I think that people should take time to get good at things and become able to be good at things. And be celebrated for being good at things. So that, yeah, like the person who's been an engineer or, 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 or a, a mid-level engineer for 40 years and knows absolutely everything inside and out or the guy who does page layout and can make InDesign just dance like a monkey these people deserve the same set of sort of compensation 
Now, they don't deserve the same sort of compensation that you get at the upper echelons of the of the of the C-suite. What I think honestly needs to happen is we need to put a cap, a salary cap on. I mean, everyone, to be honest. <laughs> Lady Anaris, yeah, like, why, what, why should you want to desire to move outside of your area of expertise? There we go. Why shouldn't, why shouldn't the default be, I want to keep doing the same thing and getting better and better and better. <laughs> oh, well. I'm not I'm not proposing any particular different system because there's a lot of discussion around that. I mean, especially when we're looking at uh, issues of, of truth and reconciliation when it comes to management of the very lands that we're working on. It's it's all systemic. We, we, it needs to be thought of and examined in a holistic manner. But these are specifically the the bugaboos that I am currently. Uh, jamming on now, would you look at that we are just about uh done with this side of the keyboard so let's point that down point this other side down and let's get on with these extendios here okay so how did we how did we have that we had this one nope I don't even remember how we did this. We had this one like this. I remember that. And then column, uh, I want to say column, column. Okay. Let's do it there. Sometimes I want to move to a more management role or department lead, but only because I've shown to be good at it. Dragonite, if if you're if you're good at it and you enjoy doing it, having having managers who are skilled and adept at at being able to manage people is extremely important, and we need we we always need more good managers. So uh, I mean, if 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 you think you'd be good at it and you think you'd enjoy doing it, heck yeah, get in if you can. But we shouldn't be having people aspiring to do that sort of thing when they don't want to and they don't need to ah, not through enough through a hole bad 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 I used to think about getting into to management because I, I listened to a lot of podcasts on the subject, uh, and it was uh, back when I was working for the uh, the not the Métis Nation, the Rupertsland Institute, uh, a center of Métis excellence. I negotiated myself up to getting a uh, a manager's title, communication manager, with no one reporting to me underneath. Which I thought was great, because that's the perfect kind of management position I want. But, uh... Turns out, people want to see experience managing people, if you're going to have that title and continue to... Get it. And they want you to keep managing people, and I decided that that's not what I want to do. So I'm quite happy with my role currently as being a communications... No, no, not a communications. Sorry, I'm now a technical... Desktop? Yeah, desktop technician is the actual title. Because government titles are dumb. But... It does mean I get to work in InDesign 
and Visual Studio Code most of the time. And make things look pretty what once were not. And also make things accessible what once were not. And readable. And usable. And that sort of thing makes me very happy. I like to make things better. Okay, so that's one locked there. Whew, that was a tough one. Don't want to manage people, I want to turn people into dinosaurs. Hmm. I'm sure we've got a place for you in this, uh, in this organization. Step manager, what do I have to do to get a raise? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Brozard, ne ne never mind uh, the, the worry there. I've honestly never uh, ne never seen a, a, a uh, crossover of Mabim Bam ending slash, uh, I want to say, Pornhub uh, trope. Next up, we got this one here. Just poke it through. Poke it through. Poke it through. Poke it through. Ow. Wait, that was, that was a premature owl. Oh God, no. Why is everything bending? Okay, got through. That's, that's all I want. All I care about is through hole. Go players! I've only gotten to do that twice in a uh, in an official film capacity, and every each time I, I love doing it. Once was for me, uh, back when I was still doing my podcast in Japan. We did a, a video was spectacular for a 50 second episode, but. My house user support is sort of a shorthand for I am bartending coding, doing bootleg social work, and, and managing the distributed computer. Yeesh. Talk me down from the existential terror of nuclear war in the middle of how do I get this instead of EXR to the compositing pipeline there from another up. Oh boy. <laughs> Nope, 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 nope. Dragonet, I won't disagree with you there either. But again, you got to be that kind of person that's uh, that's happy to to do the web management work, or and also is competent at being the manager work. It, it's vitally important in my in in my humble opinion uh, for the person who is doing the managing to be familiar with how the work gets done. And yeah, MBAs are the... Uh... I have opinions! <laughs> but... All, all I will say, and no shade against anyone who has an MBA, uh who either loves management or wants to make money, but I get real uh, tuxedo mask feelings from, <laughs> from the whole concept of it. My work here is done, but you didn't do anything so long.
time to go fail up elsewhere. Go through. Yes, good Pierce. Good Pierce. Up we go. Ride that wire all the way to the top. And then get to the top. Yeah, there's a reference. Okay, that looks good for those three. Let's test some continuity. My favorite of the brewed beverages. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, 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 hey. Good, 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 good. Last column. I mean, we might as well test the other three columns too over here. Why not? Just make sure we got them all correct. Good. One. Good. Okay, this one. <laughs> Just laughing at Brozard's uh, mention of Tuxedo Mask and uh, why Naoko Takuchi uh, created them. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I have no knowledge either way, but I absolutely believe that that's something, that, that sounds like something uh, Takuchi Sensei would say. Good wiring. Good wiring. Speaking of good wiring, um, that's not a segue, but uh, the segue has good wiring, I, I think. Dean Common. <laughs> Dean Tuxedo Common. You can tell me if not. Um, we're going to take a short break here. Get up. Stretch your legs. Swap your fluids. Do what you need to do, because we're going to be back with a bit more of Tinker Tailor Solder Fry in just a few minutes as we continue this keyboard uh, prototype construction. Don't go away. Ah, hello, folks. Welcome back to Tinker Tailor Solder Fry here on the Mighty Loading Ready Run Video Entertainment Network. Uh, for those just joining us, we are currently putting together a keyboard prototype, uh, which we will use to prototype a keyboard, because that's that's how it's working. Uh, we're currently in the final stages right now of, uh, of one side of it. And I think what we're going to do, just to uh, let you know, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of these, <laughs> I'm going to clean up just a bit put these diodes in a container that will keep them straight and narrow. Uh, but I was going to suggest that uh, I think what we're going to do is we're going to uh, make this more a, a multi-part project. So, God, this seems like a really bad idea. So we're going to finish up by putting the switches in tonight. We're going to see if we can uh, do some testing there to make sure that they're all, the continuity is correct, etc., etc. And then uh, we're going to uh, come back on a future episode and finish up with side two and maybe the controller as well and uh, make this a, uh, a whole thing because this, this is an interesting project. I, I, I feel like this is interesting. I don't know if the assembly is necessarily that interesting, but it's uh, nice to hang out with y'all and have some have some chat times, and it'll be nice to see this project through to the end and know how it happens. And we haven't had a good uh, multi-episode project in a while. So let me just finish by putting the rest of these into this slot. Maybe we need two slots of diodes. 
There we go. There we go. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I should also take... Yeah, you don't want to do that at the end. I won't take any extra time. I'll just keep doing this, because this is apparently the most entertaining thing I can come up with. I just really like organized, small, straight things like these. Oh, that's satisfying. What are these? They are made in China. They are... Five hundred pieces fast switching. Nope, you don't get to know. Well, I'll look that up. I'll look up the part number when I get back on, uh, on Amazon. All right. We need... Whoops, there's one leftover diode. This is the loose here. That in there. All right. Let us add the final yellow wire to the top of this here for our row. And that is almost a keyboard, friends. Yeah. Do -do 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 -do. Let's, uh, you know what? Let's give that a bit more room to play. Okay, that's that's something, right? 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 Okay. So apparently the next step is all we need to do is uh, just push these in, and it should uh, just push itself through. The, the top. So, just for an example here, we're going to mock this up. So you've got your holes here, you've got your key switch. That's got the two blades, one of which is uh, pointed, the other which is flat. Uh, but the flat one is going to connect with the section that has the diode. So the diode hole is up there. The keyboard uh, Stabilization pin goes in that hole, and that just lines up nicely with the diode up there. The other one, this blade, is going to optimally, it will pierce the, the skin, uh, the silicone of the wire, and everything will just sit nicely. Draconid, it is indeed 3D printed. What's more interesting about it is that it is all generated via a script based on a KLE file, keyboard layout editor file, that you, uh, that you say uh, using, well, you use a program of some sort, or you can edit it by hand in JSON, but you say, you know, we want, oh, I want this many keys, I want them to be laid out in this fashion, I want them, them to be this, uh, this layout, so you can lay out your Dvorak or whatnot, uh, etc. But, then the script says, okay, well, I've got all these key uh, areas. We're going to put them in this formation. Print it out that way you like. Also, we'll generate files for a back plate and a top plate for you. And it just makes it really easy to make novel new keyboards. Uh, I mean, not exactly 100% easy, um, because this did take us two hours to get to this stage, plus the 3D printing time. But uh, it's cool. It's really cool to do. So we're going to try starting with uh, this one to just uh, just see what happens if we just jam it in. Senpai. Sorry, it's crow time. There are crows in the area. Oh, okay, that felt good. I felt that kind of just go gloomp. Let's take it out and see if we can see the hole on the left behind in the wire. Ah, yes. Not sure if you can see it, but it's very faint. Uh, maybe I can just pry it open just a bit. But it absolutely did open up a little hole in the wire there. 
So that leads me to believe this part is going to be actually extremely easy. Attempted murder? Oh, hell no. We've got mass murders around this area. Uh, what I'm going to do here, too, just to avoid bridging, is I'm going to trim some of these... Uh, edge. Actually, I'm going to really just nail down the bend. And then I'm going to trim these. Uh, what do I want to use? This is nice and flat. I'll do. Bend, 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 bend. Bend, 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 egg. Ah, that's just a joke for you, Tilty House fans out there. Okay, and then we'll just clean up this back end here a bit. So that's not quite so shorty. Shorty! Shorty cross the wires like blah, blah, blah. Shorty do the sort of like da, da, da. We just have to pray that these never come unseated from the wires again. <laughs> also, I think my nippers might be magnetized. So that's cool. Goodbye. Okay, coming to the end of the road. Nope, not going to get this stream muted. To the end of... I can't help myself. The road. Just coming out, senpai. No, I can't let go. It's a natural. You belong to me. I belong to you. Whoa, whoa. To the end of the road. Ah, sorry, sorry. The, the the muse took me there. Oh yeah, just use the god hands for this. Yeah, that'll make everyone happy with me. I mean, the only thing you're supposed to not cut with god hands is, is like acrylic or uh, or harder plastics, right? Metal's just fun, just fine. Avaldorian, no, covers are not supposed to be fair use. This is an interesting thing uh, about cop. I, I studied a lot about copyright back when the DMCA first uh, came on the scene, back in the old year 2000. Uh, so I've been. Watch, I've been watching this this whole copyright copy fight for years now. And uh, covers are covered under a different part of copyright, uh, which is, oh God, now I'm just gonna I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get the, the, the wrong one, but I'm pretty sure that they're covered under mechanical licenses, which is beautifully uh, part of the old copyright information. It's a set amount of money. You can you can you can do a cover song. You don't have to ask for permission. Weird Al just did it. Oh, parody. Yeah, parody was Weird Al. That's a different thing. But yeah, you can just pay a set fee, cover a song, and that's it. No problem. And because it's a set fee, there's no there's no 
negotiations that need to happen. There's no issues with uh, with, with light with, with well, there are, there are issues with licensing, but the licensing itself is just simply pay the person, set up a contract. It's yeah. The fact that we don't that we don't have that sort of easy licensing available today is part of the real problem with copyright. Uh, yeah, after that, revenue from your cover is yours, plain and simple. That's another point, random trivia. But it's it, it was one of those laws that was created back when the idea of copyright was still a, a, a growing concern and was something that was supposed to be for a limited time only. And therefore, it was uh, laws around copyright were made such that there was always an op. Well, they were made with the public good in mind that people could access these works after a certain amount of time, or would have access to these works through a set and regulated fee system. And that is uh, is what makes it so interesting and and good because it means that the, the that these copyrighted works get to exist under copyright, which means that people get paid for them, but are also accessible to people who want to remix and and increase uh, vibrancy within the culture. So, yeah, as the other as the other Trevor says, but now, thanks, Mickey Mouse. Yeah. Demon Fire says, fun fact, even though that is true, you can get a compulsory mechanical license if the composer tries to refuse. Composer has a first right rights of first performance. You can prevent someone from covering your song by never performing it for the first time. Well, that's cool. Wow. Just record all of your songs and never perform or release them. All right, let's push some let's push some buttons into some wires. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Apparently, switchers just come in these uh, packages now. I'm not sure how I feel about them, but... Uh, I do like the, 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 the box that they come in. Okay. Second one. I'm not going to check that they've all gone in correctly, but... As long as they feel like it. Oh. This is also my first hot swap keyboard, which is an, an interesting thing to consider. Okay. See, so yeah, we're going to test these. Um, in a second. Matrices are cool, aren't they? In the US, if you play a cover in a venue, the venue is required to pay a fee to the Writers Guild. Yeah, it's... It, it, there's a lot of things going on there, but the fact that that, that things are, are preset and not subject to negotiation is, I think, what's the most important thing about that because of the way that, uh, that that culture works under art in a remixing culture. Fun fact too, if you only release your cover on digital music streaming platforms, you don't even need a license because those platforms are supposed to be paying for the license themselves. The Maricat, that's interesting. That could explain why I see so many... Actually, I haven't, I haven't seen them in... in about a year now, and I think that's due to the fact that, uh, let's get there. Uh, covers of anime songs by, by, by North American English speakers, or really just covers of North, of Japanese songs by North Americans in general, used to be on, uh, things like Spotify and iTunes, just a plague. You couldn't find anything, and their recommendation engines would be like, are you like anime music? Here, you'll, you'll like this cover by this person for some reason, so... I'm happy that uh, I'm happy that people are allowed to do that. I don't want it though when I have access to the actual music. And uh, now that uh, I mean, I thought that Johnny's was starting. Johnny's is a uh, a talent uh, management house in Japan that uh, is the worst. Um, but like they they manage basically uh, SMAP. Uh, 
Murtakia, a lot of the a lot of the old popular ones were managed by Johnny's, and it, they they just did not want to deal with North American licensing. They didn't want to. Uh, they they don't like video games for some reason. The reason I bring this up is that uh, Judgment, uh, the spin-off Yakuza series starring Kimura Takia, which I've all, always said uh, the reason it doesn't feature karaoke is because Johnny's wouldn't let that person uh, be seen singing. Uh, apparently, because Sega wants to release Judgment on Steam and Judgment 2, uh, Johnny's doesn't like the idea of this, and so they're probably going to pull Kimuro Takia or just completely pull support for the entire game franchise. And that's the end of it. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the uh, laws around copyright and, well, are written closer to original laws around copyright and uh, licensing were not always set up with the best interests of uh well they were made in a very different time and with a very different idea of uh of, of profit gain. thank you the mirror for actually uh throwing out the actual interest uh some actual information there But I think it's really cool that that sort of a uh, that particular not a loophole, but loop. I guess you could just call it a loop in copyright. Friends, that's half a keyboard, kind of without logic. This we, what we've done, if nothing else, is we've created ourselves a uh, keyboard matrix and it looks really dang hot i gotta say um yeah let's do a quick as quick as one can uh continuity test okay so we're gonna have to do rows and columns so let's start with uh, start with a rose here. <laughs> okay, let's get that in there. Huh. Well, that didn't work at all. Do I even have this thing on? Yeah, I do. Okay. Um. Ah, I had the wrong wire. That would help immensely if I used the correct wire. Also, I don't have a chat up. <laughs> Admiral Panic, I'm I'm a big fan of uh, of mechanical keyboards and have been for years. And it's it's fun to actually get a uh, a bit of work in on these things okay you know what actually i'm going to do something that i probably shouldn't do but here's my there it is gotta have the tools ready let's strip because i'm going to use some new tools but we're going to need to strip these anyway for purposes of whatever it is that we want to do with regards to wiring this up. I think what I'm going to do in the end is I'm going to uh, put some DuPont connectors on because that seems to be to me uh, a really handy way of connecting things. I like DuPont connectors. Please do not sue me. Aha! Draconite actually sees uh, what I've got going on here with the Probe Master probes. I was talking about them earlier, and good God, Draconite, they are a... Uh, uh, as I said earlier, uh, if you've got a multimeter, 
and you want your multimeter to feel like a fluke because the parts because of uh, the parts that you're currently touching are normally the probes buy some probe masters because they are the shit i might have to actually approach them and see if i can get some sort of a sponsorship deal because i have Never, well, not never, but it's rare that I become such a convert to a product uh, that quickly, especially a product that you really honestly should be buying maybe once or twice in your life. <laughs> Cursed DuPont connectors and their insulation grips for their offset tines. Oh, yeah. No, I've, Dresden, it's been the, uh, it's been a long uh, road to getting to feeling good about learning how to properly crimp DuPonts. And now we're getting good. Um, let's see, Ethel Torian says, with mechanical connections, random strips and flicker. Had to solder everything to get things to work, except for the last section, it never worked. That's sad. I, I recently replaced a, uh, a the overhead light in my kitchen. Uh, it was an LED uh, thing, or a bobber. And it's... Uh, not... I mean, it doesn't look much different from your... Your, your frames and what was there and everything inside those was soldered so I figured you know that's probably that's probably the right thing to do is soldering sorry uh, I should have zoomed out a bit for testing we're, we're attaching some new probes because probe master probes are so good <laughs> oh Texan this uh thank you again for uh, leaving this behind with us this has been great I've been using this uh Basically, any time I've been working with wires on this show, uh, we used it to, to DuPont connect a bunch of stuff a few episodes back, and we're going to be doing it again in a few episodes in the future. But they're so good. But yeah, Probe Master Probes, 100% uh, believe that they are worth every penny. And I say, yeah, they are. If you want your, your 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 multimeter to feel like a fluke without having to pay fluke prices, just get some probe masters. Okay, so let's go up to here. And we got nothing there. Wait, do I have the right? This should be connecting, right? I don't have these backwards, do I? Does it matter? Okay, hold up. Just take it out and see what happens. Okay. Grab, meh, grabby pin. Okay, that seems to be fine. So. I hope I didn't get everything, anything backwards. Oh, maybe I wasn't getting a good connection on the uh, the grippy bit. Yeah, that seems like that might be the case. These alligator clips are not exactly the most precision materials. You know what? I might just, because these robes come with some real good stuff. I uh, got that. Like, I think this was the $25 kit myself that I got. And nice silicone bendy handle bits. Solid core all the way down. Real good stuff. Let's use one of these uh, probers. I think that'll give us a better connection. That's what we're trying to do. Spin that on. Okay. Uh, let's again get down to the bottom. Okay, that is only connecting there. Uh, let's push the end. Okay, good continuity there. Good. Green. Now... Am I just misunderstanding the process here of how these work? Mm. 
me just make sure that it's... Okay, so we do have continuity there. Maybe I am just misunderstanding this. With the diodes, don't you need to be testing the other end of the green wires? I mean, yes, I do. Yeah, like the green column to row. I'm worried. I'm worried that my, that my diodes are all backwards. We're going to figure this out. We're going to find out in just a second. Let's... Double check here. Okay, do I have a diode? We're gonna do one more diode here, just, and we're gonna do it backwards just for fun. If the diode is backwards, the multimeter would beep if you swap the jaws. That's what I thought. Oh, flip the probes and check. Well, that's that's an easy one to do. Okay, let's just uh, throw that over here. Throw that back here. Reconnect that to uh, the wiring. That's a good grip there. We have... No, that's diode. We have continuity there. Okay. Let's plug the switch back in. Okay. Hmm. Like, unless I'm completely misunderstanding the concept of how these are wired up, something seems amiss. Unless this is working... So here's the thing. If I connect from here to there, uh, and then push the button, that and that get, completes the circuit. But that's the top edge of the diode here. Maybe that is how it's supposed to work. Maybe I just don't know what the hell I'm doing here. <laughs> but that shouldn't... Does it matter which end of the wire is? Hmm. Does that complete this circuit or connect it to ground? Yeah, maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm just unsure as to how uh, as to how these things are supposed to work. But I still want to try that. Uh, try doing another diode because this might be that I've got it backwards. So let's see here. I may have honestly just messed up anode and cathode, which is a thing that I, that sounds like something I would do, you know? Okay. Got a good little bitey boy there. Right, let's extract that. Uh, bend back the pins. Extract the ow, the die owed. Uh, come on out. Cathode is positive. Yes, I. What I'm unsure about is which side is the anode and which side is the cathode.
pierce that wire. Good. Through. Good enough. Yank. Ugh. Further yankage. There we go. And the other side goes through hole here. Why did I why, why did I bother using the template? And I'm just going to ruin everything with my yanks and cranks. Okay, that's backwards diode. Is backwards diode backwards or properly forwards? Find out now on your phones. Okay, let's get that in there. Oh, wait, that's the... Okay. So maybe I just don't understand how matrices work at all. Like, I feel like if you have this to that, that should... Com completing the circuit should complete the circuit, right? We do still have yellow continuity, yeah. Do we have green continuity all the way through? Pretty sure we do. Yep, no problems there. Okay, let's reverse. Hmm. Okay, well, let's try some of the other switches. Maybe it's just this particular one that's messed up. <laughs> let's try the next column over. Let's see how that... Uh... Oh, yeah, with the other diodes reversed, there might be a continuity issue. Yeah, that's a good point. Um... Let's start with this one. Let's just see if that goes. So either they're all the wrong way around, or we have... ...done something incredibly wrong. Ah. Ah. Try testing the switch itself. Hold on a second, let me just disconnect here. Okay, we're gonna prop... I'm probably gonna need to do one of these columns completely. Um, jeez. Let's pull that switch out, because that one feels like that's just gonna be... Yeah, these are two diodes are now trash to me! Um... Uh... Diodes only prevent ghosting. The others won't matter if only one key is pressed. Continuity on a motor on a DMM can test a diode. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure about that. So, second column in. Full continuity down the column. Uh, first row. Nothing there. Do we... Let's test the switch, just because I'm getting uh, questions about that. Pick that in. Push it there. Push the key in. Key switch is fine. <sighs> What's wrong? I don't think there's any shorts back here. We tested each of those diodes to make sure that they're incorrect. The whether or not these switches are all the way in shouldn't matter until they're actually pressed. So that's fine. Um hmm.
the mirror cat, you are correct. That is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to wire up a single key and see if it works the way I'm, I'm expecting it to. Let's do that right now. All right. So, wire it up the way we had it before. Oops, where's my template? Black strip to the right. Uh, we'll just use... Give me some... Any amount of yellow wire should be enough. Oop, there we go. Gotta, be, gotta start being less precious with uh, things like wire and diodes. Okay, let's give ourselves some strippage so that we know what's up. What's the name of the script for this? Ah, uh, Dragonite. You can find it here. It's really kind of cool. Okay. Let's get this in here. Green column made. Oh, no. Whew. Safe for you. I hate that I have to keep trimming these, uh, sharpening the ends of these diodes to get them through the, uh, the silicone wire properly, but... Oof. Okay, I think that might be okay. We'll see in a second. Actually, we can tell right now. Boop. Grip. And... Sip. Good. We're good. Through the hole. Okay, that's in there. Cross wire with yellow. Jam a switch in there. Okay. Grip one side of the column. We should do this on screen. Set the column, test the other side, push the button, nothing. Push the button, no continuity. Wait a second. So there's no continuity, but that's the thing. I'm doing this dumb. <sighs> or just badly. So, here we go. Uh, where is my... Let me get my other gripper there so I can have full hands. It's a gripper. There's a gripper. Yes, I know they're on wrong sides. It's correct. The yellow is indeed connecting. Here's why I can tell it is. Uh, I'm going to grip that. I'm going to grip that. Watch here. And notice... You bastard. Why are you doing this to me now? <laughs> uh, so... Side to side, we got continuity there. Side to top, we have continuity here. Crosswise, do we get continuity at all? And I push the button, and now it doesn't. Why? Ah! Okay.
Oh, of course that's connecting like that. Anything there? Nope. Anything here? I think I might just be mis mis uh, understanding how these matrices work. Okay, here we go. This is what I was talking about. So, when you do get it hooked up, and you do depress the key, you get a difference in, uh, looks like resistance actually, I'm going to say. Yep. Yep, this is, this is working. Okay, so we were wired up correctly. So let's wire that one that we had back into place and check again. It's just not a straight continuity testing. That's the issue. And it's probably only one direction too, Maricat. You're right, I think. So get that. To go oh come on go through the hole there was a hole i made it i need different nippers that leave it cleaner sharp ends too okay get in there come on oh come on Don't do this to me on air! You know what? Fresh one. Fresh diode, because I'm wasteful now. When using diodes, test the meter shows for forward voltage on the diode. That's a good question, yeah. What's, what's that like there? One and two. 0.634. In that direction. Uh, other direction, oops, down black to the left, nothing. So that seems right, yes. <sighs> okay. Where's my diode bender thing? Wait a minute. How'd you sing? There's that. Let's just use the needle to pin, I mean. The needle's different. Make a hole. Two, three. Okay, get that diode in there before the silicone heals. Ow! And then he pulls it back out of the hole. Good, in there now. Uh, find the other hole, switch that up, flip that to the side, flip this one to the other side, add the switch back. Okay, let's see if we get what I want. Change? No change. It's okay. Try the other direction, because I think it might be the other direction. I'm getting into all sorts of complicated electronics these days. Okay, so now it just doesn't do anything. Um, how, how is this doing? Do we still have continuity uh, between the various parts? Green and... Okay, there's still continuity there. Okay. And...
Switch back one more time. Oh, because now we're in continuity mode. Ah! Okay. Let's do it correctly in the sense that let's make sure our probes are correctly colored. I don't think this actually matters, but this is... Well, Richard, I don't think that's the case. And even if that is the case, all we need to do is reverse the uh, the columns and rows, right? No, that wouldn't help at all. All right, let's get that back hooked up there. Top up here. I love these hook probes like this. Okay. Try the top one. Aha! Okay, so it might just be this switch here then. As you can see, when we push that button, things come through. Let's go down to the next row. Nothing here. Okay. Uh, what about row three? Oop. Grippy, grippy. Nothing there. Okay. Let's, you know what, let's try top column, because that seems to be, or top row, because that seems to be working out okay for us in terms of at least these two. That works. Okay. Give me column two. What does column two have to say about all of this? Column two, row one. No good. Column two, row three. Oop. Column three, row one. Works. Okay. So. I think we're dealing with some blade uh, piercing issues, is what's going on. Because that one's a no good. This one. A good. This one. A no good. No good. Okay, let's have a look at this here. See if uh, we can note any piercing that's going on. And I don't know if it is or not. Okay, let's try one last time on that one because I'm pretty sure I pierced the, the veil there. And then we go up to there. And then we push the button and it does, it does get through. Okay. So that's. <laughs> yeah, uh, the green pier. So Richard, so the green pierce piercing is easy to measure because I can just do a simple continuity tests uh, from one end of the the wire to the the end of the diode that's piercing it. That's an easy like, tap, tap, tap test. Because these are, because the test points are all fucking sealed, it's more difficult to do that. But that tells me that all I need to do is uh, get back in here and make a very concerted effort to make sure that these are all positioned in the right place. Uh, but I think this is a really good place for us to, uh, call this an episode because we've got half a keyboard made. We've got, uh, some testing to do. We've got some things to re-pierce. We're 
on a good trajectory. And that's what I'm happy about. So we're going to call it there. Thank you so much. It does not bode well for the hot swappable nature of this board. I mean, Reagan, it, it, it's not a problem. It just means you have to be very, uh, you, you have to be very conscious of how you uh, plug these keys in. Like, honestly, I was, I was just jamming them in here one by one. But if I take the time to actually look and make sure as I'm setting it in, that like, is that, is this blade down the center? Is it going to do a good pierce? And you can really just feel and see it go in. That's, uh, like, I'm pretty sure that's a positive connection. And in fact, you know what? I'll test it just now. I don't even need to do that. I can just use my fingers. Fingies. And you can see the, the thing is not giving any current passage. Oh, God. Touch the wire, you... Okay, and I think I might have that backwards, in which case we'll just do this. Grab that. Push the button. Probably still not a good enough pierce. And in fact, I can see from the edge here that I don't think it is pierced. Yep. It looks like it just went edge on. In fact, if we... Yeah. <laughs> No continuity there. So that's... Good God. So the... The readme file for this suggests that uh, it's not a bad idea to... Splite or to uh, slice the wires in the areas where... Wait a minute. Yeah, it's not a good idea. It, it, it's a good idea to slice the wires, and I think we might uh, want to give that a try in uh, in the future. For ease of testing, one clip all the same colored wires to a common line hooked up to each probe. Then you can push buttons without swapping through your probes each time. I guess. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> Let's do that next time. Um, as we said earlier, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us uh, today on Ticker Taylor Solar Fry. This has been an interesting one because it's not the usual... Uh, it's not the usual one where we know where the goal state is going to be and everything's going to be working out uh, just following the instructions. This is a... There's a little bit of uh, wiggle room here, and I, I like it. This is, a, this, is, this is definitely let's try material. Um... On top of that, I want to say uh, that if you've enjoyed what you're seeing, we've got a lot more stuff here at LoadingReadyRun.com. Uh, you're on Twitch right now, twitch.tv slash LoadingReadyRun. But if you go to YouTube.com slash LoadingReadyRun, we've got all of our premium content there. By premium, I mean it's really good. That's that's it. You don't have to pay for it. But you can pay it youtube.com slash loading ready run if you become a member you can then ask us questions in our monthly askler systems that's just one of the ways that you can support us monetarily another is over at patreon.com slash loading ready run it keeps the lights on here in uh, the well here in the crystal gondola and over at the uh the moon base and at everyone's house because it's how, how we get paid so uh thank you for those of you who contribute to that um we should also thank those of you who are our uh, patrons, not patrons, but are patronizing us uh, at twitch.tv slash loading ready run here with your subs and bits. We got a few of them here that I want to go over. Specifically, I want to thank the third phase of Olumpy Gravy, who subscribed for 15 months saying yeet. I can't remember what I yeeted, but well, uh, I, I, I will receive your yeet of a subscription. Antitonic, subscribed for 91 months. Ooh, some sort of knitting stream, I think. I'm not creative. I, you are creative, but maybe not in the traditional manner. Uh, that said, thank you so much for your continued support, Antitonic. Uh, happy to have you here as a part of the community. Planes walk a go go. Subscribe for 21 months, evening in. Here's hoping the heat dome isn't desoldering too many boards on you. No, thankfully the heat dome has has left us here in Victoria. That said, I did see a Japanese uh, uh, 
family altar uh, that had a one of their candles that under the heat dome had decided to partially melt and just sag over. It was sad. I saw it coming in with 53 months of subscription. Thank you for your uh, continued membership here on the channel. MTG Ranger has subscribed for eight months. Wow. In Valen's name. Wow. CJ subscribed for 37 months. Thank you for your continued support, CJ. I look forward to seeing the Jackal. Uh, saying, yay, custom keyboards. This is a sign. I may need to get a split keyboard myself. You can make you can make one. They're, they're kind of great. Wonder Moo, subscribe for 95 months. Thank you for continuing to moo here on the channel. And Drek Zero, in with that just under a full year of weeks in months, 51 months. Thank you for your support as uh, well. Coming up next on the channel is whatever happens on Friday. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head, but I can find out by going to loading ready run dot com slash live you can find the schedule there and uh, if you do so you might notice that play it forward is happening in the morning that's uh, kathleen coming back to become a raccoon detective which is cool and then i think checkpoint plus happens in the afternoon at 2 p.m till 3 and then of course on saturday the gladiator games if you are a magic gathering uh, fan slash player uh get in on that it's it's gonna be a fun time uh, it's a big tournament that everyone gets to play in, including you at home, the viewer. If 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 all the slots haven't already uh, filled up yet, get in on that because uh, should be a good time all weekend long, friends. Thank you so much for joining me on this weird journey um, through scratch build keyboarding. This is certainly informing a bunch of my future decisions with regards to uh, keyboard making. But for the moment, uh, that's the episode. So, yeah, cheers. Have a good fortnight, and we will see you in said fortnight's time. Until then, as we say every time, keep it sleazy. No, ever forward, never learning. Good night. <laughs>